Well today I'll use this disc here to tie a couple of videos together. This was marked yarn. I bought a number of pieces of wood at a garage sale a few years ago and I'm pretty sure that's what that was. This is some unknown veneer that I also bought. I've hot glued a tenon on here. We'll be making a bowl from a board and the other connection to this was in January I made a bowl from a board with sides that had some curvature when I glued it together. And I said I'd show in detail how I did that. I also mentioned that my little cutting fixture, this works really good for multiple angles if you put the slots in there. And somebody mentioned, well why don't you put one more slot in there instead of twisting this. And I said because back in January I said I'd be designing a new cutting fixture for a bowl on the board and that's what I come up with. I'll show you how that works once we get everything mounted up. So let me put this back in the chuck. We'll get set up and I'm cutting three different angles. 45, 55, and 60. I've yet to try a 60. I've yet to try this. So we're going to do that right now. So I'll be right back. This will be mounted up and we'll cut some rings. Alright, I've got it all set up. This is for the 45 degrees. I've made a series of these templates which I'll keep. That popsicle stick is the same width as my parting tool. I put that in there and I see that my tool will be cutting on a 45 degree angle. I also have it set up to where I put a pencil line on here. We want to leave just a little bit of that pencil line. I'll be turning around 700 RPM. This piece warped a little bit while it sat around but I think it's going to be fine because I've got a glue press and we can flatten it right down. Okay, this is the first cut with this fixture. I like to slow down a lot, keep it from tearing out. And that was a pretty nice cut. So far, so good. All right, here's the first ring, and I'll show you how I go about making sure the rings match. I don't decide what that's going to be and put a bunch of lines on there because you've got to take into account the thickness of the cut that's going on and actually how accurate was that cut going through there. If you're freehanding it, it could vary a lot. So I like to determine the size once I know what it's supposed to be. And this is 6 and 7 eighths. So if I marked 6 and 7 eighths on this one and leave a little bit of the line, these two things should fit together really nice. Let me get that marked and uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Now I have to change the angle for the next one which is 55 degrees. I've adjusted the camera so you can see things maybe a little better. This template set at 55 degrees. Got the popsicle stick in here and that's right up against it. I have it set up so that the pencil line is almost cut off but leaves just a little bit that tells me I'm in the right spot. Let me get my face shield on and we'll do the second cut. I've made some diagrams and drawings of this exact procedure on how to cut these rings and make them line up. I'll be putting that at the very end of the video because I'm sure not everyone will be interested in seeing that. So be sure to stick around to the end if you are interested. That's getting close. And I just cut through. That one cut nice. Alright, let's get this one off and we'll do the last one here. And then we can glue it together. See, you notice on the bottom of this, there is no tear out at all. And I have heard people having problems with tear out. <coughs> A dull tool and pushing too hard 
when you're almost through will definitely give it tear out. But this came out very nice. That measures five inches. And even taken into consideration with the tool, it's still really close to the drawing. The other thing, I know taking them off, putting them back in, the chuck could be problems. That's a piece of dry wood. I also have a little mark on the tenon, a mark on my chuck. And if I hold it in there, tighten it up, it runs as true as can be. That doesn't work with green wood, but it works with kiln dried wood. Let me get my uh, 5 inch mark on here and we'll see if we can get that 60 degree angle cut. In case you're wondering how I'm setting that 5 inches as well as the other dimensions, I use my scale, a set of dividers. I've set the 5 at a 2.5 inch radius. I've got just a small little mark in the middle here. And then I'll get a line right there. That is what we're looking for. Alright, I'll get this set up and we'll go ahead and cut it. Alright, I've kind of perfected lining this up. This is only the third cut I've made with this tool. So I put a square end on the popsicle stick. That way I can see where it's at in relationship to the line. Put my 60 degree template against the popsicle stick and making sure it's against the turning and it is so we're ready to cut right before the tool cuts through you can hear a sound change that's when i use less cutting pressure Alright, success! Okay, I'm all set up to glue the rings together and because there was a little twist in these pieces I'll do a set right here and let it tack up for a while and then I'll add the rest of them. Because it was getting kind of late in the day, I decided to glue the other two rings together on the lathe and then I'll be right back over here and we'll glue all four together. So I got this glued up later in the day yesterday and, and now it's about two o'clock so it's probably been 18 hours or so. I'll go ahead and get this mounted in the chuck and we'll get a shape on it. I have it back in the chuck and it's actually running pretty true. And we're about 900 RPM. I'm just going to clean up the inside with the half inch bowl gouge. Because of the three different ring angles, there was very little to turn in between each one to get a curved surface. I'm going to call that good for now and we'll work on the outside. So this will be pretty much the same. I just need to blend these sections together and this rim will be the harder one to blend together because it's sticking up quite a ways and I didn't cut that beforehand but I still have a little bit to take off the diameter. So let's see what we can do here. I just sharpened back up and I got a light over it here so I can see it a little bit better. Yeah. 
Yeah, that isn't too bad. Okay. I think we just about have it. I do have some glue showing up right here. Okay, I just resharpened the negative rake scraper. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this cleaned up and ready to sand. You could probably hear the squealing that was going on cutting this. It's the vibrations. There's not a lot of support there and it's getting thin. I'll use this piece of melamine just to try to give it some support. And I'll use the negative rake scraper to clean up that area that has just a little bit of glue showing up. Make sure that's running decently. That sounds good. Okay, we're going to do about 700 RPM. Okay, I got that area where there was a little step and glue showing up. So that's all cleaned up. Everything else feels real nice, so I think it's time to sand. I'll start the sanding with 120 grit. I'll be running the lathe in reverse around 400 RPM. My dust collector is over here, and I'll turn it on in a second, and we'll do some sanding. And I'll sand up to 400, and then we'll do the inside. I sanded this up to 400, outside and inside. I'll be spraying a different lacquer today. It's the Rust-Oleum lacquer. I'm going to try that. Honestly, it was half the cost of my favorite, so I decided to give it a try. I like the looks of that. I think it's pronounced yarn. I'll go ahead and move the camera and show you the inside getting one coat and then I'll get it finished up. I'm going to get all the lacquer on and I'll see you when it's time to remove that tenon. Well, let's see if we can get that hot glued tenon off. I'm putting denatured alcohol up against the hot glue and trying to get it to soak underneath it. That'll usually loosen it up and we'll let it sit for a while and come back and do it again. I did use Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish on the finish and I didn't show that but I have a video showing just using the Abrasive Paste and Polish and I'll put a link in the description and I have more detail in that video than what I could have done here. I've let this sit for about 10 minutes and it, I can see that it's pretty much loose and it just came right off. So you just don't want to be impatient with how long you wait to do it. If it's hard to pull loose it's not ready. I'll be back and talk about what we have here and talk about what you're going to see at the end of the video. Well here it is. It's all done and I think it's a very pretty bowl. Finished eight and three quarter inches in diameter. It's two inches tall and the walls are about a quarter of an inch. It's made out of yarn and I've decided that that lighter wood is basswood because it's fairly soft. I sprayed it with multiple coats of lacquer and I went over it with Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish and it has a very nice finish. 
but actually the video was about how to make a curved side on a bowl from a board and I got a fairly nice curve out of there and if you choose to watch at the end of the video I'll have a better explanation of how I did that and I'll tell you what the radius is that we got. I also tried my new ring cutting fixture for the very first time and a couple of months ago I I did a bowl from a board and I wasn't able to get the angles I wanted off of the wooden fixture that I made without adding another slot. So I decided there's got to be a better way so I made this. It's adjustable any angle I want and I can turn it back and go this way if I choose to cut the rings the opposite direction so that I don't have to take the bowl out of the chuck each time. It's just a one inch dowel with a piece of aluminum that I've shaped and put a groove in it. This uh, hose clamp puts it in place and then in the banjo there's my adjustment. So if you're interested in more detail on how I cut those rings and make them match. I've got a little demonstration at the end that you can watch and I'll show in I think more detail on how to do that if you're interested. If you're not interested uh, I appreciate you watching what you did and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video there's two things you can do to let me know. Click that like button and leave a comment. I read them all and I do my best to answer all of them. If you're currently subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're not, consider doing so. I try to do different types of turnings every week. If you are interested in seeing how these rings were cut and made to line up with a curved surface, be sure to watch the video at the end of the pictures. I decided to wait to the end of the video to show this because I don't think everyone will be interested, but I think a lot of you will. So here's what we have. This is the stock that we're working with. It's actually half of the stock. The radius is right here, and it's easier to show this way. And what we're going to do is make a series of angle cuts on it. And I'm going to do a 45, a 55, and a 60. We'll take the stock away so you can see that. So there's the 45, there's the 55, and there's the 60. So what I do is this is the only dimension that I actually mark from the beginning. So I've decided a 45 degree angle and I want to get about that close to the corner because I anticipate cutting this corner off and that leaves me enough stock to have a nice wall. Once I make this cut, I measure this bottom. I transfer that onto the stock that's left and mark it here. Then I cut this line, leaving just a little bit of the pencil line so that it will line up pretty close to that corner right there. I make the 55 degree cut and I end up with the same thing. This corner here is the same as that one. And this is what it will look like. We'll have that ring and then we'll have this ring this ring and then the base so this second ring that corner will go right down to there and line up underneath there and this is what that looks like that's just dropped down there and it should line up really close the next ring the same thing that corner goes down to here now the last cut here, there's nothing to measure because that's the base. And then that will be down here like that. So let's take those pieces away. And that's what the shape of it looks like. And we can take that sketch away as well. And that's what it looks like. So it already has kind of a built-in radius with flat spots. What does that look like and what size is it? Well. That's a radius that fits pretty close and it's about 6.64 or 6 and uh, fat 5 eighths of an inch. And 
that's a pretty good radius for doing it this way. Now if I didn't do it that way and I just went with a straight wall cut on 45 degree angles, that's what that wall would look like. And you can see there's not enough stock to put much curve in there. And if I use that same radius, you can see I could cut up here, but I'm losing it there and it's going to be very, very thin. So that's the whole idea of doing this this way. And if you like straight walls, then you just cut them on one angle and that works good as well. You can vary how steep that angle is by changing it and cutting them all the same. Well, I hope that helps and uh, if it doesn't, let me know and I'll try to explain it even better. Till the next time, we'll see you later.